Righto, so today we're going to look at computation with fractions. So what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at a couple of key things. So we talked about equivalent fractions, so that was where one half is the same as two quarters, which is the same as four eighths. So we talked about equivalent fractions and we talked about how we, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about adding and subtracting. So we'll start off with that bit, adding and subtracting. So if I've got something like, say, 1 over 7 plus 1 over 7, I can add those together and get 2 out of 7. Now where it, life becomes interesting is if we've got, say, for example, 1 over 7 plus 1 over 14. So when we've got something like this, what we're really looking at is we're looking at changing the denominator. So we look for the common denominator. I I usually find picking the lower the lowest common denominator to be the easiest way. So seven and fourteen. Well, I can make fourteen by calling one out of seven the same as two out of fourteen plus one out of fourteen, and I end up with three out of fourteen. So that's the simplest way that I can think of to explain it. Once we've done that, we add and subtract the denominators. We could do exactly the same if it was, for example, 1 over 7 take away 1 over 14. So we could go 2 over 14 take away 1 over 14, which equals 1 out of 14. So multiplication and subtraction. This is where like, uh, multiplication and subtraction, multiplication and division. I obviously need my morning coffee. So multiplying means adding a repeated amount. So if, for example, we've got a half times three, we get three halves, which, as we know, is a improper fraction. We can also write that as one and one half. Simple version. Complicated version. Sometimes, and it's going to be very rare, I'm going to get you to do half times a quarter. Now, multiplication is nice insofar as we just multiply across the top, 1 times 1 being 1, and 2 times 4 being 8. Multiplication, as I said, relatively straightforward. We can multiply by whole numbers, which we've done before. So say, for example, we had 7 over 8 times whoops, 4. We do 7 times 4, which gives us 28 out of 8. We just treat our, our 4 as being 4 over 1. So 8 times 1 is 8, 7 4 is 28. The next thing we need to learn about today, we need to learn about reciprocals. Now, a reciprocal is the number multiplied by the number is equal to 1. So the reciprocal of a number, say for example I need the reciprocal of 7, the reciprocal is 1 over 7. 7 over 1, the reciprocal is, see, reciprocal becomes 1 over 7. So. If we had a more complicated example, such as, say, 5 over 6, the reciprocal becomes, we flip it upside down, 6 over 5. Now, reciprocals, the only reason we learn about reciprocals is because we're going to need to divide a fraction by, divide a number by a fraction. So, say, for example, we needed to divide... three-fifths divided by four-eighths. We do the reciprocal first, so we flip the second fraction upside down, so we have three over five, we change the operation to a multiply, we put the eight on top, and we put the four on the bottom. So we put our reciprocal in, we can do that calculation now. 3 times 8 is 24, divided 
divided by 20 and we can go through and we can call that 1 and 4 out of 20 and diddly potatoes all sorted. So we've done a couple of examples. What happens if we add a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of weird stuff? So say for example we've got 1 and 9 tenths plus 2 and 3 fifths. Make it nice and easy to start off with. So with addition, sometimes it's easy to do it with the whole numbers. So 1 plus 2 makes 3. We've got 9 over 10. So 9 over 10 plus 3 fifths, which is 6 over 10. So we just go through. We've got 9 plus 6 is 15. So that's an extra whole. So we've got 4 and 5 out of 10, which is the same as 4 and a half. So sometimes it's easier to do that. In general, it's not going to be that nice. So if, for example, I gave you a particularly nasty one, like 1 and a third, Third. Let's try using that eraser, hey? One and a third plus four and three quarters. So this one, it's not going to be very nice at all. We're going to end up with probably a common denominator of 12, just doing 3 times 4. And what we, I'm looking to do is I'm going to make them into a improper fraction first. So that one is 3 holes, 3 parts of a third, so we've got 4 thirds plus... 4, 4 is 16, so I've got 16 plus 3 more makes 19 out of 4. As I said, not a particularly nice one. We're going to make them all out of 12 because 12 will be our lowest common denominator. So we're going to have to multiply 4 times 4 is 16 out of 12. And 19 times 3 will 6... 20 times 3 is 60, take away 3 gives us 57 on 12. And then we can go through and just add those two together, we end up with 70, 83? Seventy-three out of twelve, and we can put that into a mixed fraction if we need to. When it comes to multiplying, I strongly recommend that when we're doing this, we change them to improper fractions. It's very difficult to do it without doing that. So, say for example, I give you one and three nineteenths times. 2 and 1 quarter. What we're going to need to do, we start off just changing the denominator. So 19 plus 3 gives us 22 out of 19 times 2 times 4 is 8 over 4. So 22 times 8 gives us 176 out of 19 times 4, so nine, 20 times 4 is 80, take away 4 gives me 76. Now, we can write that as an improper fraction, 
I like leaving it as an improper fraction. It's going to make life a bit easier when we go into algebra, algebraic fractions and whatnot later on. Did I really not record any of that? <laughs>